Hello everyone. It's been a while since I made a video, but uh, so many things have happened in our community that I felt like a, a new video was, was needed to help update the community on, on where we stand and uh, where we are as far as the science goes. I came up with a hack uh, to help people understand in a simple way. Uh, it's rudimentary, but once you get the concept, you'll understand why some of the claims we see within a community are quite frankly uh, impossible. We have to understand in the beginning that SMA is not characterized as an SMN disease. It's a motor neuron disease. SMN is what affects the motor neurons, but what causes the paralysis and a loss of movement and a loss of the ability to swallow is, is the death of motor neurons, okay? And that's very important to understand. So when we see articles on, on reversal or, you know, we misinterpret what reversal means, um, it's definitely not reversal of disease. That is impossible. To reverse motor neuron loss is impossible with any of the programs that are currently in the clinical trial. It cannot be done. There's a reason why many trials are being done in younger patients and newly diagnosed, uh, and many of the drug companies realize this. They're going into infants because they're trying to get to the disease before there is motor neuron loss. Once there is motor neuron loss, SMN cannot help those motor neurons. They can only rescue the motor neurons that are left. So if you go in early, you're putting SMN in before you see that cell death. A lot of, a lot of younger parents will say, well, you know, we've seen kids get so much stronger. You have to understand, prior to this drug era of SMA, us older parents were there. We had children in our disease that were diagnosed originally as type one and without any drugs. They were later re-diagnosed as type two or type three. Now, if there was no drug that was improving them, what was it? It's very simple. The science behind SMA is not understood on the front lines by most of our doctors, and many of us can attest to that. So automatically, if a child has two SMN2 copies, they'll diagnose them as type one. But we know, the parents that have been in the disease for a long time, that that's not true. It really depends on each person's body and how they express that SMN. So even if you have two copies, I've seen type one, type two, and type three with two copies. And there's no way to tell in the very early stages how strong a patient's gonna be. I remember when my, my child, Sophia, was diagnosed, we asked those questions. We got the diagnosis, is she gonna be a strong type one? Is she gonna be weak? Is she gonna be middle of the road? And SMA specialists, people who were specialists in the disease, could not tell us whether she was going to be strong or weak or any other details. It's really in the uh, infancy of, of, of trying to decipher, uh, you know, where a child's going to be. They, the science just isn't there yet. And, you know, the doctors on the front line, the geneticists, your regular pediatrician, they don't under understand the disease. They only understand what's written on paper and automatically... If it's two copies, they diagnose as type 1. So in, in some cases, when we see an improvement, it's simply because that kid was going to improve anyway. And it's very important to understand that. Now, the simplest way to understand SMA is by utilizing corn. This is what I came up with. If you see on this, this cob of corn, all of the kernels, they all represent motor neurons. Okay? This is a healthy patient, it's full of motor neurons. Now, when we go into a newly diagnosed type 1 patient, you know, depending on the stage of the disease, they had some motor neuron loss already, but this is very early on. At about six months in a type 1 patient, we have about a 60% loss in motor neurons. This is what it looks like. So now that you understand that, it makes this impossible. You could saturate this whole corn in SMM protein. As much as you can get in there, you could soak this thing overnight. It's never gonna replace those motor neurons that are lost. You might be able to rescue what's left here. So that's why when we hear that there's been a reversal 
or a potential reversal. I, I have parents that have been in the disease a long time asking if, if my child's going to be able to walk, you know, and they're two or three years into the disease. No, they're not going to be able to walk. And it's unfortunate. And I wish that wasn't the answer, but that's the truth. And I think it's important that we get the truth out there to families. So this way we can, we can learn from this and move on and help progress in the disease where it needs to be. We need to understand that SMN can only stop progression. Most likely it's going to be a great thing for future generations, for the children that are not born yet. You know, our kids, maybe it'll stop them where they are. The only thing that's going to replace motor neurons and to reverse a disease is if you have a motor neuron replacement program to try and put the kernels back on. I hope that makes sense. I hope that helped you understand the disease a little bit better. Um, you know, and I think it's time that I start really doing uh, more videos. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good night.